Welcome back once again, everybody, to Knox Asian Recipes. Today, she's making soy milk with flavors. She starts off with about 500 grams of soybean, and she'll clean and soak these beans overnight. And then when they've soaked overnight, she grinds them between her hands so that she can then separate the hulls and remove the hulls. It doesn't matter if some of the hulls stay in there, but most of the hulls she'll remove to get a better flavor. Now she's going to run a certain quantity of beans through the blender. Probably these 500 grams will take her three times in this household blender. Cover well with water. And then she'll blender them up quite a bit. She'll run it through the blender about a minute or something like that. And then she's going to filter this out to start to gather her milk just through a piece of cheesecloth. And she blenders the pulp again uh, once. Right. In order to get as much milk as possible, she'll blend the beans one time and then she'll go ahead and blend the pulp again. All in all, she'll use about three liters of water for these 500 grams of beans. So when she's finished with the blendering process, she has left over the soya bean pulp, uh, also known as okara, which you can use. And she has other videos showing you how you can use the soybean pulp in other recipes. And here's her pot of milk, which she'll now start to cook. She'll dilute it out with a little bit more water. And so she'll cook on high heat initially until it almost becomes scalded. You don't really want to boil it the first time. But then after it's quite hot, almost scalding, then she'll reduce the heat and continue to cook for another 20 minutes. This increases the shelf life a lot. Very fresh soy milk commercially available sometimes doesn't last that long. But she finds if she cooks it a little bit more, 20 minutes on low heat after she's scalded it, then it can last for quite a few days in the refrigerator. So there it is. And after she turns out the heat, you can see you start to form some... Uh, some soybean skin on top of the, the milk and she'll use this actually she likes to drink it just the fresh warm soy milk she'll add a little bit of sugar to this one and drink it right up with the soybean skin in there as well tofu skin And so the first flavor of milk, besides the natural soy milk that she's going to make today, is using black sesame seed. And she separated out about a liter of the milk, and she'll use three spoonfuls of sesame seed, black sesame seed that was already roasted. And she'll run this through a little grinder, food processor, coffee grinder kind of uh, thing. And she'll put this back into her milk, and then she's going to cook it again. Now she's mixed in all of her sesame seed that she ground up and she's going to add uh, three teaspoons of brown sugar before she cooks it. And then she's going to put it on the heat and stir it quite a bit to get the flavor all mixed in. So after it's been heated and then cooled for a bit, she also gets uh, another tofu skin forming on top of this one, which she won't waste. She'll drink it right up. And there's one of the flavors, black sesame seed flavored soy milk. The next one is pandan syrup that she had made in a previous video as well. This is already sweetened. And this is simply mixing soy milk with some of the pandan syrup that she had previously made in a video. Delicious. And finally, you can combine any fresh fruit with your soy milk as well to have a twist and a different flavor. Nock has got a great papaya here that she's just going to cut up and then add together with some soy milk in the blender. It's almost like making a smoothie using soy milk. So you can use any fruit of choice, banana, strawberry, pineapple, any fruit that you can think of that you want to use for a smoothie just together with the soy milk.
And there's the result. Excellent flavors, excellent colors. We hope you enjoyed it. Soy milk doesn't have to be boring. Thanks for watching.